Hi, good morning. It's Andrew from ARD Sound and Lighting here and I have got a little project that we're going to do this morning. It's a, a fine spring morning and let's get cracking. I have this morning a Ruby 600 LED wash and an LED wash is an amazing lamp but the one problem that it does have is the power lead. The power lead when it goes into the flight case generally snags and it tears the outer rubber which leaves you with insulation issues and that's not good. That would fail a pat test. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to replace this entire lead and we're going to put this device here which is a Paracon connector, everybody knows a Paracon connector and we're going to take the Ethernet port out and we're going to modify the hole, fit this, solder it up, test it and make sure it works. It'll take approximately 12 minutes to do this. So let's get cracking. So there are six screws on the back of the unit just remove them and this cover here will come off this cover will now just slip off and there is in below here an earth connector which we will take off which releases that plate completely. We'll put it there for safekeeping. There's a further two screws just here which hold this rear connector panel in place. Now this lead here we don't need it but I'm not going to chop it too short because I'm going to use some of the wires which are already there. We'll put this away for recycling and remove the connector which is here for the Ethercon connection and remove the data connection for the DMX. Tuck them over to the side. There we go. Using a smaller screwdriver, star head, remove the two screws See, this wire just wants to be right in the middle of the shoe, but that's okay. That can be reused. Stay. Now, there's a 16 millimeter gland here in the UK. We'll remove that. that can be recycled as well. we'll. Pull this completely through the hole and as I say we will use some of this wire because it's already connected and there's no point in giving us more work. To pull the outer rubber off that leaves me with the three inners, live neutral and earth. I'm just going to rearrange some of these wires because they're quite tight here. This, I find if you cut approximately that length in the bin, and we'll snip off some of the outer PVC, approximately five millimeter. Okay. Now, let's get the soldering iron going. We're going to tin these connections here, and we're going to tin this wire. So a nice hot soldering iron, smallish tip, and some good heavy solder.
Soldering is one of those things where you can spend hours in the workshop and suddenly time goes by. I find it quite therapeutic actually. The tinning process simply adds solder to the electrical contact. We don't need the solder anymore so we can put it to one side. Now the hole, as I said at the start of the video, the hole for this that the Ethercon connector had is not big enough. This will not go in from either side. But I have a tool here which will allow me to punch a hole. It's a 24mm hole which is right for all of these Neutric connections, whether it be XLR, whether it be Speakon, Ethercon, Powercon. This particular Ethercon though is PCB mount and that's why it's slightly smaller. So line this up with an existing hole. And what will happen is we'll use an Allen key, it's an 8mm Allen key. We have a drill which can do that as well but no harm in using some muscle to do this. And simply by turning this few turns. You hear a click, that's the metal punch biting through the steel plate. There we go, that's done. We'll empty that later, put it to one side, we're done with that and we're done with the Allen key. Now this will fit perfectly but the existing holes for the Ethercon connection will not line up so we have to drill some new ones and that's okay because we have a an XLR panel mount and if I clamp that, this is a little trick that I learned if I clamp that onto the connection panel and use a drill, a 3mm drill bit and very carefully without drilling into the sub cabinet which is the perfect height by the way First hole, second hole always wants to go into the existing hole. So I keep the pressure on and keep it up the way. There we go. And now we're finished with the drill. Off with the club. And out with the template. Now, the most dangerous thing with electronics it's having pickles of steel fall into the electronics. So this device is a deburring tool. And we'll just give it a few turns to remove that nasty steel which is on the connector panel. Just making sure that none of it has gone inside the unit. So now it's time to fit the socket. I'm going to choose to go on the outside because the holes are a hash or a mess and the ethernet word I can cover that up completely by going on the outside most installations we do it the other way around but that's okay so two M3 screws approximately 10 mil or 3 eighths long the second one is always slightly fiddly because the hole never quite lines up And we will add some shake proof washers and some empty nut. Bear with me because I didn't get these ready. Here we go. The shake proof washer is a little washer which has teeth on it which dig in to the steel and they bite into the nut and it means that it won't slip off when the unit is in transit or sprinter van. It's the first one. It's 
quite fiddly. I would say this is the most difficult bit of the project. Now, I have some heat shrink tubing, which simply reduces size to approximately 33% or a third with heat. And I'm going to slip this over the three wires. Now I don't actually have a heat gun here today, so I'm going to come back to this later. So the soldering iron once again, because we've pre-tinned the wire and the connection, we don't need to use the solder again. Now if you're not confident about soldering for mains electricity, get a professional to do it for you. And it's really important that after you've done any electrical work to any piece of equipment, to pat test the equipment. Make sure that the insulation has not broken down. Make sure that the earth continuity is good. So that's now nicely fitted. I like to heat and then hold for an extra few seconds. Checking the connections are secure with a little bit of pulling. And then we'll slide each of the heat shrink tubes. Now this is really fiddly. Onto the electrical connection. Now remember, this is not a race. The electrical part of this has to be done correctly. So that is secure. I'm going to come back and heat gun with that, which will shrink that tube down. For now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to move on. I will be pat testing this unit as well, just to keep us all nice and safe. As I say, any electrical work you do to a fixture or anything for that matter, make sure that it's done by a qualified electrician, technician who has gone through some form of training with electrical, competent person. Now before it's too late, I'm going to put the data connection back on again for the DMX, because it's harder to do once it's on. And that's in. The Ethercon connection won't go anywhere. So that's all nice and snug. Everything's free. We can now put the screws back in to hold the panel onto the light. So two screws on the bottom. One final check. Ethercon connection is gone. The earth connection is free. The power connection is good. It's not trapped. It's not nipped. Everything is safe. And finally, we'll put this panel here, the cover back on. Now, some of you are going to notice a hole. Well done. But there is a little 16mm rubber grommet that you can buy from any of the local electrical outlets or some of the online catalogue shops. I haven't got any, so I'm going to put it in later. So as I say, it has to come apart again. We're going to heat shrink the tubing in behind here. We're going to put the grommet on here. But that is how you do it. Now the most important part after you've pat tested this let's check that it works that's us finished with all of the tools I'm going to get the Parcon lead which is here on the floor 
already switched on. Click. And it goes through its reset procedure. The screen comes on. And using a little device which I have, it's called a DMX CAD. I can actually put some DMX into this fixture and we can make it come on. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.